Hello everyone, it's Carrie. and so if you've watched some of my previous videos, you may know that a few months ago we got an RV and converted the back bunk room into an art studio and began a little traveling adventure. So we are having a fabulous time going to a bunch of really beautiful small cities in the southeast, and so far we've traveled to just about the entire southeast of the U.S. We're circling back now and spending a little time at home before our next leg of the adventure, but as I'm recording this, we are in a town called Dothan, Alabama, and this footage is of a couple of towns in Alabama. This one, for example, is in Fairhope. The beach there was absolutely gorgeous, beautiful white sandy beaches and some swampy areas. It was just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but anyway, so in the beginning of this video, I'm showing you a little bit of the footage of our trip and then some of the craft finds I collected and some of the vintage at some of the vintage shops in the area. So this interesting footage is of a place called Bama Henge and it's in Alberta, Alabama, and it's kind of a, pretty much a replica of Stonehenge and it's just kind of off the beaten path in the middle of or kind of off of a, a main road and you just kind of have to stumble upon it. There's no signs or anything showing where it is, but it's, it's so unique and interesting and fun. We had a blast looking at all this stuff. So other than the Stonehenge and stuff, as you can see here, they have these really cool statues and of different uh, dinosaurs. And one thing, little known fact about me is I'm a huge lover of dinosaurs. <laughs> So I just found these sculptures to be super cool and fun. Each and every one of them had so much detail. It was so surprising. The T-Rex was probably my favorite with those teeth. It was the most intimidating, so super fun. And the artist that created all of this is Mark Klein. He is a, I guess he sculpts these uh, big statues and so he was commissioned to do these in this marina area So like what I read is the owner of the marina wanted these characters about around the land around the acreage, so that's what he did So the last sculpture we're about to see in this video footage. So this is the actual marina and we knew about this beforehand so we kind of searched around the lake and we're glad we did because there were some really beautiful boats and it was just such a peaceful nice area but around the corner you'll see that there is a a woman bathing in the water <laughs> so so exciting to see and i don't know if you can actually see the scale of her there she is so i don't, don't think you this will actually do justice to the scale of this creation, but she's actually like bathing in the water is so funny. But anyway, so one of our favorite things to do while we're traveling is check out the vintage and antique shops in the area. It makes us feel like we're kind of getting a little bit of the history of the town as well as some interesting finds. So one of the things that I tend to find at these shops is some great crafting items that I can use with my doll making. So I've come across some really gorgeous vintage lace and unique buttons, interesting fabrics and just a bunch of really cool stuff. So in this video, I thought I'd share with you these three big grab bags I found at a couple of vintage shops in Robertsdale, Alabama. And so I'm going through them now. And at the time I'm recording the video, I didn't know what was in them for the most part. I could only see some of some of the supplies. So I was really excited about some of the stuff that I found out to be in them. So this one had some just odds and ends. And one of the things that I really love to collect, strangely enough, is, is tarnished and rusted items. So one of the big sellers of this little bag, which I believe I got for like 99 cents, was the were these pins, the, these safety pins. They were like nice and antique looking and tarnished. And <laughs> that was my big seller to buy that particular bag. And then I found this bag of, you can't really see much of, but sequins of looking at it this way, but there were actually uh, Swarovski crystals in it. So I was so super excited about that. Also these little horseshoe charms and there's one of the tarnished pins. I use the like tarnished and rusted items in mixed media art when I have time to do that. Um, but anyway, I just like to collect little rusted and tarnished metal. So I'm realizing now that there's some really good crystals in here and there was a little bag that said Swarovski crystals and there I was so excited that I dumped the whole thing all over my craft station. 
But then when I picked them back up, there were two like rose, rose goldish colored ones and then the rest were like a gold colored, but they were Swarovski crystals. And then there were a ton of other little crystals too, but the Swarovski ones, you can really tell the difference in the quality. So there's one of the tarnished safety pins I like. Then there was a little die cut. There's a package of different kinds of little, little quirky gems. So what I do with a lot of that stuff is kind of use it as embellishments on the costumes that I make for the dolls. And this bag was kind of neat. There were a couple of watches, like old watches. And I did throw out some of it, but then that one there is kind of like finding gold for a crafter because it had the real clock parts. It was a winding a winding watch, so they're the real gears and stuff to make some steampunk stuff. So I have a little, little tin, uh, tub there of my steampunk gears and stuff that I put it in. So as I'm going through the bags, I just have all my little, uh, what do you call them, little Tupperware type things that I store everything in to put it away as I'm opening it. This was some sort of, uh, I don't know if anybody knows what this is, some sort of coin, looks like a, from Asia. So if anybody, anybody knows what that is, there were two of them in the bag, let me know in the comment section below. I don't know if it's like a yen or what, but <laughs> there were two little coins in there and I thought they were neat to maybe make a bracelet with or something. So there was an applique, that pink one I just kind of tossed out and that blue one, they were just kind of dingy looking, so I didn't want to mess with those. Um, I love these wooden... Um, spools and this one looked like somebody already took advantage of how unique they are and made a little craft with it but I love wooden spools and then this I was also excited about these are very high quality crystal beads I'm not sure if they're also Swarovski's or not but at first glance I thought they were those little cheap beads just kind of play beads but then I realized that they were much nicer than that there so they were very high quality so somebody it looked like somebody was gonna make a nice necklace or something so that's really cool to have a couple of red feathers I tossed out and more of those um, scraps but then as I dumped out the rest of this little bag I found that there were even more of those Swarovski crystals so I separated that all out and was thrilled to find even more and just some other odds and ends. So the next bag, already seeing more crystals. And in the first little pouch that's in there, it looks like somebody must have run maybe a little Etsy shop or, or did some craft shows or something and had these little thank you pouches, but really nice pearl and crystal accent or gems. So those are great to have. And then these cool little glitter stars, When you make so many different characters of dolls, it's good to have a stash of just a bunch of different things. You never know when you're going to need something like this. Like normally I would never go out and buy a pack of stars, but you never know if I'm making some sort of like anime character that has a star necklace or something. You just never know what you're going to need. So it's really good to keep these all organized and have a bunch of little bits to choose from. So then there was this set of small flower accents and some of these pearl things this is something that I guess you usually see in like wedding band, band headbands or something I don't know <laughs> little pearl things and then I found these two I don't know what I would do with these but I guess there's little stained glass kites that somebody must have crafted And then there's a bunch of buttons, and uh, there were this, this bag of tiny buttons. Those are cool. 
may use those on a costume. But a bunch of different shapes of flowers and trucks and Christmas trees and peace signs and hearts, just different kinds of buttons. So you never know when you may need something like that as well. So there's some planes. So some of them are buttons and some of them are things that it looks like somebody would have made a, a children's hair accessory with. And then some small buttons and bits. Some of them look like something that might be used for the barrettes or hair bits that they use in that Decora uh, Japanese style of uh, like fashion. I don't know. <laughs> then there were some brads and these little metal bits. And then here is the huge pack of just random stuff. And the, oh, I forgot to mention the last bag I also got for 99 cents. So this bag was a dollar, or I think it was $2.50, but just with the thread I made out because I don't know if anybody's noticed, but nice thread is expensive these days. Like it's like two or three dollars for one thing of thread. So I was really excited to get all these different colors of nice thread. Tons and tons of different colors. I go through thread a lot. And then there was also, so this is like extra strong. It's kind of like that gold color you find in jeans. So I guess that's why it's jeans thread. <laughs> and then there was also this really cool metallic silver thread, which I'm so excited to have in my collection. And there were some pipe cleaners. Don't know what to do with those, but I guess it's good to have. <laughs> and then some of uh, spray adhesive, which I am a huge hoarder of glue. I just have every kind of glue you could possibly imagine, so I was glad to have that. And then all of these unbelievably cute buttons. And some of them I didn't take off of the card because they looked so vintage and old, like 39 cents for those buttons. Like I don't think buttons are that cheap anymore, so I think they're really old. And then a bunch of other different buttons. I, I have a huge collection of buttons. I just love them and I keep them in jars and just obsess over them. So I was really happy to have a huge stash of these buttons. And one day after I opened this pack, I ended up just spending the afternoon having a glass of wine and separating them out and it was like the best day. <laughs> so look how beautiful some of them are. Just really unique buttons I would never find anywhere else. I don't think. These are some of them are like flower shaped and a lot of um, little embellishments on them. They're just gorgeous. I was very excited looking at them. <laughs> Does anybody else have an obsession with buttons? Let me know in the comment section below. Am I alone? <laughs> and then there were just some other little things in here, uh, little these hooks and some glue and some like dollar store pad of paper. More buttons, some raffia kind of ribbon. Oh, and these really cool needles. Those are the easy thread needles. And some of this mounting tape is very cool to have. Tape and glue, I just have tons. <laughs> and then this little sewing kit, which I will definitely use, and a crochet needle. Some elastic. You can always use elastic. Some bias tape. And this looks like I've seen this jute ribbon at the dollar store, I've just never purchased it before. I use one of these like crazy when I'm sewing, so I was glad to have an extra one. 
so I'm just going through some of my favorite finds. So this super uh, double adhesive or spray adhesive was so exciting to find. Also, one of the threads came with a wooden dowel, dowel so I'm going to be really happy when I finally finish off that thread so I'll have another wooden spool. <laughs> and then this embroidery thread, the metallic embroidery thread, one of my favorite finds. These flowers, I always like to have a stash of different kinds of flowers, especially for the Day of the Dead dolls that I do. And these little buttons will be very helpful in some of the costumes. And all of the, the pearls, the little pearl accessories there were, I was thrilled to find. And then of course the Swarovski crystals. Oh my gosh, I was just blown away that I was able to have a whole stash of those in this package. So, oh, and last but not least, the super stash of buttons that I was very happy about. <laughs> that was probably one of my favorite things that I found. So I, oh, and a lot of these other buttons too. But I totally recommend hitting some thrift stores or antique stores in your local area or if you're traveling because you never know what you're going to come across and it's just really, if you're a doll maker, it's really a good idea to keep a bunch of different accessories on hand because you never know what will go with what you're making, what you can use. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.